Zanzibar, a beautiful island archipelago located 50 miles or 80 kilometers by ferry from the coastal city of Dar es Salaam. The islands have an incredibly rich history and to this day are a major trade hub in the region. Zanzibar has a diverse population with influences from various cultures including Arab, Indian, African and European. This blend of backgrounds is reflected in the architecture, cuisine and the way of life on the islands. Growing quickly as a tourism destination in recent years, the beach fringe main island of Anguja, commonly referred to as Zanzibar Island, is home to the UNESCO World Heritage List of Stone Town, the Ruzani Forest National Park, which is home to the rare red Colobus monkey, and Chengu Island, which is known as Prison Island, famous for being a refuge for giant sea tortoises, and the incredible offshore coral reefs that have been drawing divers and snorkelers to the region for decades. Welcome, this is Zanzibar. Hey everyone, Jeremy here and welcome to our port preview for Zanzibar, Tanzania. Now the first thing to note here is that your cruise ship will be anchored offshore and you'll be arriving onto Zanzibar Island by a tender boat. Now you come into the main ferry terminal where boats are also arriving from Dar es Salaam on the mainland. Now after making your way up the ramp, you'll enter through a terminal building where you'll find a small information booth and a room with some seated area that normally provides access to some complimentary Wi-Fi. The terminal is located around half a mile or 800 meters from the heart of the amazing Stone Town region. Now sometimes cruise lines might offer a short shuttle service and there are taxis available if you do need to. However, if you are reasonably active, there's a simple straight shot walk down the main waterfront road into Stone Town. While Stone Town became a World Heritage Site in the year 2000, its history stretches back thousands of years. Now over the centuries, it's been this major hub for spice exports and for a very long time played a key role in the East African slave trade. An Anglican cathedral was later built on the site of a former slave market to commemorate all of those who suffered. There is there an on-site museum and local guides to give underground tours to see where the slaves were held. Now this provides an incredibly eye-opening experience into the dark past of the island and should be viewed as an important part of your visit to Zanzibar. Stone Town is also home to such sites as the Freddie Mercury Museum. Now the birthplace of the Queen frontman, this house is now a dedicated museum paying tribute to this all-time music legend. It is filled with different displays and memorabilia about his upbringing on the island and his journey to becoming rock music royalty. Now you'll also find in Stone Town the Hamani Persian Bars, where you can explore the remains of these historic bars which were once used for relaxation and socialising. They offer a glimpse into the opulence of Zanzibar's past. The Old Port, built in the 17th century by the Omanis, is a historic fort that once served as a defensive structure. Today, it's a cultural centre hosting historic events, art exhibitions and a craft market. Now you can ex also explore the fort's ramparts for panoramic views of Stone Town. As for the markets, you can wander through the bustling Darajani market. And whilst there are more stores centrally in Stone Town that are focused on, let's say, the tourism trade, this market provides a great glimpse at local life in the area. Now there's just hundreds of stores selling everything you can think of from clothes, DVDs, kitchenwares, children's toys, and all kinds of spice products. Many people come here too to buy their meats and fresh produce. As I say though, many of the little alleyways within Stone Town do have some fantastic stores. And I actually think this is one of the better African cruise ports to buy items that you might want to take back home with you of mementos of your travels. Now, whilst there are many other sightseeing options in Stone Town, these are just a few of the highlights. Now, the key thing here is just to wander around, soak up the atmosphere and explore these maze-like laneways because you never really know what surprise will be around the corner. And if you do have the chance to be here at nighttime too, definitely check out the Faradani Night Market. 
It's right by the park on the waterfront row. And at night, you'll see all kinds of food vendors selling items, and it's a great local gathering point once the sun sets. Now, speaking of the sunset, being on the beach right in front of the Old Town is also a great place to be at that hour. Because as the day starts to get a little bit cooler, everyone is just out and about, playing soccer on the beach, and just being with family. So it's really this great place to just kind of be present on the island for a while. Now, there are many travel opportunities that are just a little bit further afield than Stone Town, such as the beaches on the eastern side of the island, offshore islands like Pemba Island and Manemba Island, and also the different spice farms that you can find all around Zanzibar Island. Another option too is the Marurubi Palace Ruins. A couple though that I do really want to highlight here, however, are the Jozani Forest and Changu, also known as Prison Island. Now, Changu Island is just off the coast of Stone Town. Now a tourist attraction, Prison Island was once a place where slaves were detained, and also at one point it served as a place of quarantine. The boat ride from Stone Town takes about 20 to 30 minutes, and arriving on the island, there is this mysterious kind of rustic wooden bridge that hovers a few meters above the water, jetting out into the sea. Now on one side of Prison Island is a refuge for these giant sea tortoises, originally a gift from the Seychelles. A five minute walk across the island leads to the former prison ruins. Now though in the past it was this kind of torturous place to be, nowadays the ocean cliffs with the overgrowth of the plants on the stone walls and the view of the turquoise ocean, it is quite a stunning place and these days a lot more pleasant. For most visitors to Zanzibar, the island's main draw is its fabulous beaches, supplemented by the diving and snorkeling opportunities that abound on the offshore reefs, and the compelling unique atmosphere of Stone Town. The interior, by contrast, tends to be a little bit overlooked. Now, for natural history enthusiasts, though, the main attraction of the underrated interior is definitely Jozani Forest, which now forms part of the Jozani Chawaka Bay National Park. It harbors the largest concentration of endemic red Colobus monkeys on the island, along with other rich bird life and various other forest creatures. Now, this monkey species is endemic to Zanzibar and is considered one of the rarest and most endangered primates in the world. The Zanzibar red Colobus monkey has this distinctive appearance with its striking red coat and tufted white beard. In addition to the Zanzibar red Colobus monkey, the Jozani forest also hosts other wildlife and plant species, contributing to the overall biodiversity of the area. The forest itself is an important conservation area and provides a habitat for various animals and plants that are unique to the region. Historically, local people have cut trees and harvested other forest products for many centuries, but commercial use started in the 1930s when the forest was bought by an Arab landowner and a sawmill was built here. In the late 1940s, the forest came under the control of the colonial government and some replanting took place. Jozani Forest was set aside as a reserve in 1952 and, as similar habitats elsewhere were cleared to make way for agriculture, much of the island's wildlife congregated all here in this place. Now, the forest was declared a nature reserve in the 1960s, but despite this, the trees and animals were inadequately protected. Local people cut wood for building and fuel, and some animals were hunted for food or because they could damage crops in the nearby fields. Nevertheless, Chozani Forest retains much of its original natural character, and exploitation of its natural resources has more or less ceased since 2004, when it was merged with Chwaka Bay to the north and was proclaimed as Zanzibar's first and so far only national park. Cruise lines will often offer tours here, and local taxi drivers will be able to be hired to make the round trip journey. Now the drive takes about an hour each way, and it is super interesting as you pass by many local villages and interesting scenery along the journey. So have the cameras ready as you're going. So these are just a couple of suggestions of things to see and do in Zanzibar. Now this truly is one of my favorite cruise ports anywhere, not just in Africa, but just really anywhere in the world. 
If you haven't actually booked a cruise yet and are looking at different African itineraries, if you do get the chance to have an overnight stay here in Zanzibar, it is something I'd highly recommend as there's just so much to see and do, and being there at nighttime is quite fun too. Now as for the currency whilst you're here, some places will accept US dollars, but it is recommended to have some local currency. Now the Tanzanian shilling is the official currency, and at the time of making this video, one US dollar was equal to around 2,500 Tanzanian shilling. If you are planning to explore Stonetown on your own, I definitely recommend downloading an offline map onto your smartphone in advance. Whilst it is a fairly compact area, it is easy to get lost in the maze-like alleys, so using your phone's inbuilt GPS will help out tremendously. Now for more information, we will leave a link below to the Doc Discovery Zanzibar cruise port information page, and if you have any questions, just let us know in the comment section below. So thanks very much for watching everyone and enjoy your time in Zanzibar.